everyone. Assalamu alaikum. It's Faham, and you're listening to the Nice Invest Tea Talk podcast. Hope everybody's feeling good. Ready to start your Friday. Alhamdulillah, it's Jumma today. The first Jumma of the year, in fact. And we're here to recreate in podcast form what happened last year at my local mosque sister circle, where a few of us got together and I was able to run a session on all things personal finance. Whether it had to do with budgeting, pensions, halal investing, we covered all of it. And at the end of the session, I asked my sisters to leave me with what questions they had so that I may uh, carry on the conversation with you in podcast form. So thanks so much for joining me and let's get started. So the question this week asks how to manage my finances and family expectations. So you'll be pleased to know that in this week's episode, we're going to talk less so about savings and more about uh, spending. Precisely how is it that we spend uh, as an adult? Now, of course, you're probably wondering why is it that I'm talking about adulthood? Of course, it means that I've made some huge assumptions in reading this question. Um, Just to read it out again, it says how to manage my finances and family expectations. And the reason I talk about adulthood is because when it comes to uh, personal finances and our money in general, we often think about money um, in conjunction to some type of life milestone that we've gone through and you can see how that's quite a natural thing to do because money can be a vehicle through which uh, we achieve um, a lot of our goals now the uh, any life transition has its own challenges and it can have like its own particular things that you have to deal with but i feel like the transition from spending when you're maybe you're not earning your own income or you might still be a child and you're earning your income it's very different to spending when you're an adult so the transition into adulthood is an interesting one um, when it comes to how it does that does it relate to your personal finances because there isn't like any particular sign that happens that says okay now you are of age or now you are fully operating as an adult because you can see yourself perhaps still studying well into your adulthood years so technically just not being a student isn't necessarily the definition of being an adult and conversely you might have had a job while still being at school, maybe between the ages of 16 and 18, you may have had a part-time job um, and still have been going to sixth form or college. So that is uh, a reality. And you may have had to manage some type of budget at that age as well. So uh, when I wanted to approach this um, episode, I thought to myself, so how is it that I can go through with you, especially the time of year that we're in, uh, and kind of pick out the differences between the money systems that someone might have in their later adulthood years compared to the ones that they may have had when all of the money that they were earning was effectively spending money or it was not earmarked for the very long term. Perhaps that you can tell me if you think that that's a good way to delineate the two. But effectively what I'm trying to say is that perhaps as adults we are kind of looking at our life ahead of us and trying to think about what it might look like 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now that you might not have done when you've had your first job or whilst you were still a student. So the idea of this episode is um, quite lighthearted in in actual fact, you'll be pleased to know because a lot of the things that I'm going to be talking about is not saving. It's instead quite the opposite. It's about all the ways that we can set up our, our personal money management systems that kind of signal that we are an adult and also how is it that we can spend our money in a responsible um grown-up way uh, what are what are the signs of, of being uh, grown up so I'll get started uh, with number one a sign of an adult is if you don't have the same current account that 
your parents may have opened for you or the one that you may have opened for yourself while you're still a student. So if you're still banking with the same high street bank that you had uh, when you first had your very first uh, current account, that might be a sign for you to switch. Switching current account does wonders for the way that you think about your financial system because you're not tying yourself to perhaps the way that you were spending money in the past but also tying yourself to an institution because perhaps you might be thinking they have your data and all that kind of stuff in reality it will give yourself more power as a consumer if you feel super liberated in switching um, your current account and there are huge benefits from starting with a a fresh uh, slate so that so that is number one related to this one is having a second current account why do i say this is because we are setting up for ourselves a money management system and the way that the money management system works is that it reflects the way that we prepare our budget and one of the most effective ways of budgeting is through the um, zero-based budget. Now the zero-based budget is a, a system where you have money coming in and at, as soon as that money comes in you are setting um, a role for the full amount. That's why it's called zero-based budget because by the end of after having your budget each penny has been allocated to a certain role. How is, does this relate to having a separate current account? I highly recommend going for one of those uh, current accounts like Monzo uh, and having that one um, as your spending account. And by spending, I mean if you the, the sum of money that you assign yourself each month that is kind of no questions asked spending personal spending and this really does help uh, organize uh, your mind and organize your money why is because you're kind of removing a certain level of pressure for yourself uh, I feel that as grown-ups we should spend less time budgeting for really individual items it's better to think in a way where you assign a certain percentage of the money coming in towards a certain category of things and by having a second current account uh, and what i do is i have a like a high street bank for my main current account and then i have a second current account which is a monzo and i assign a certain percentage of my budget each month and quite literally that is what I use to uh, just s swipe. So uh, that's also what I pay into a certain amount that covers my travel for the month. So besides using that to, s to swipe on the London Underground, I also use that uh, for going out to eat or, I don't know, getting coffee with a friend, that type of stuff. You just know that in general, you feel comfortable that that percentage amount towards that uh, towards that category. And why this is as great is that some direct debits also would go towards my mom. So any apps that I pay for on Apple, my Apple Pay is connected to my Monzo. So that is not connected to my main current account and why do i think that that's a good way of having your money management system is because you now no longer have like maybe fewer responsibilities you're trying to manage many other different types of goals and the best way to budget effectively i find is by having as few main line items as possible in your budget and one really easy way of doing that is by simply having two current accounts and have a catch-all amount that you pay yourself as a percentage of your budget that goes through the no questions asked spending and you'll have been rest assured that however that money is spent it doesn't matter because it fits into the bigger picture second sign of operating as a as a grown-up is having an emergency fund now i know i said that i wasn't going to go into too much detail about saving is that now what the emergency fund does is it provides 
you with a baseline from which you're starting from when it comes to managing the inflows and outflows of your account because you want to have it in, in your head a new figure for what zero might be and the new zero is effectively a, a three to six months emergency fund and why do we do that it's because uh, as adults we have to uh, be comfortable uh, planning for the unpredictable more so than we did when we were younger and also t- uh, it kind of is a great sign for how not everything that is in my account is technically spending money that is why we have a separate current account for no questions asked spending and i feel like the reason why i adhere to this is because it kind of allows and supports the budget to work like having an emergency fund is effectively supporting your budget why because if not everything especially an emergency needs to put out of whack the the way that you had assigned the percentages of your budget and uh i'll get into it in my next point but because emergencies tend to be you know the, the the level of the amount of cash that you might get in every month having an emergency fund is a great way to support your budget because it allows you to always move forwards um and budget as usual budget in a way that is kind of habitual whilst taking care of what it is that subhanallah life throws at you and so that was number two having in your main current account a separate savings account that is called is effectively an emergency fund and so third i'll try to make this point as actionable as possible we have to as adults know what is and what isn't in our means so a great distinction uh, about managing your own finances is being having a clear distinction between what the different time horizons are for and what goals should fit into which bucket now the short term uh, for me is anything between 18 to 24 months so i want to as difficult as it might be kind of have a ballpark of how much that might cost me and that helps you in setting up your budget and it helps you uh, pay for things in advance Uh, because if you think about it a savings goal that you might have within 24 months is almost like you're saying i'm spending that money three months from now six months from now and uh, when i said that it is all related to helping the budget do its work that's effectively uh, what it's doing so these uh recognizing your different time horizons so what do i mean everything within let's say less than two years falls under the bucket of short term anything between three to ten years is medium term anything 10 years plus or even let's say 15 years plus is uh the super long term so for me the super long term is retirement and saving for children's university the 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 medium term would be buying a home or if you're uh, saving up for a wedding the short term for me it's mainly gifts and holidays and i would say yeah if i ever buy a new laptop or a new phone these three things kind of fall into this bucket of how is it that i save for the short term having a time horizon where you start to consider anything within two years as short term therefore something that you can be saving for today to spend in the very near future is by having a sinking fund so i'm so glad that this episode comes at this time of year what i tend to do is write out a list of how many trips if i want to take how much is it that i reckon that i'll be spending in gifts in your mind you want to know that these things aren't going to catch you by surprise the way that it should work is in, in actual fact you should just be putting the same regular amount into your sinking fund like you do each month and feel like you're taking out of your sinking fund when you're making each of these purchases and what i love about budgeting is that you have to kind of trust the process and know that it might take a while to iron out these systems but once it does it really will start 
moving like a well-oiled machine. Definitely feels grown up if you have uh, short-term plans, medium-term plans, and long-term plans, and a system that allows you to move towards each one of those at the same time. And so that is effectively what uh, your sinking fund is there to do. You're simply saying that each month I'm going to be putting away a certain amount of money and I expect to spend that money within the next uh, 12 to 18 months uh, because I have this trip planned or I want to buy this new phone or I need to replace my laptop, that type of stuff. Um, so when you think about how is it that that fits into my broader budget, um, I would really recommend following the 50-20-30 rule. And what we've talked about today is um, mainly how is it that all this stuff about sinking funds, that actually fits into the 30%. The 30% refers to your wants. So perhaps the nuance that we've talked about today is the fact that there could be some wants that fall within two years that you might want to save regularly for so that you're able to uh, pay upfront and in full and in advance and It'll, it'll probably cost you less if you if, if you're not doing it last minute and you're able to you know plan in advance and weigh up different options that is a type of saving that falls within your wants uh, and whereas the 20 percent that we call for your future goals this relates to if you're paying down debt or you're saving for retirement or you're putting money away for your kid's university, that is what falls under at least 20%. And then 50% is your essentials. Um, and the best place to start, of course, with your budget is probably figuring out what your essentials are. And once you've got those covered, then you might be thinking, can I make the 20% towards my future? And by future, I mean really long-term goals such as retirement, saving for kids' university, or paying down debt. And then you can see uh, what you're left over with your th hopefully 30%. And that 30%, you should feel, the way I do it, I kind of split it in half. I do 15%, just goes into my Monzo. Don't really care what it is that I spend on it. Um, it kind of sets the budget really for what it is that I can afford. And then the other 15% is based on my long list of things that might be happening within the next two years. I try to save regularly for in my sinking fund. And when you look at your sinking fund, you should be expecting it to, you know, money to come out of that every so often, uh, sometimes more months than others. I've been tracking this for a period that I kind of know the cyclicality of my own spending. Um, I realize that perhaps in the summer you tend to spend more. Before Ramadan, kind of like this, these next three months, I reckon I'll probably not be spending as much as the three months that come after that. And you, you know yourself, right? But the idea of keeping a sinking fund is kind of to just smoothen out um, these expenditures. So that's really all I had for, for this episode. So yeah, the, the, the point on time horizons was effectively my last one. Uh, the idea that now we have such thing like short term, medium term and long term, and that allows us to feel better about knowing what it is that we can afford, what it is that we can just swipe on our Monzo, and what it is that we have to think about planning more considerably and towards the future. I feel that hopefully helps us have like uh, good conversations with our loved ones around us about what's possible and what's not possible or what's important, what's not important. Um, so I hope, hopefully this episode has been useful in thinking that, you know, being good with money doesn't just mean being a good saver, but it also means being a good spender in many ways. And that don't be surprised if uh, the topic of money kind of pops up uh, in the midst of other important conversations in just the way it is that personal finance and our personal life milestones tend to crossroads together very often. 
So that was all I had for this week's episode. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. I've been Fahani Romhashi. You're listening to the Nisa Invest Tea Talk podcast. I hope to see you next Juma. Bye for now. Oh,